Hi everyone. So today we'll be learning about Werner's law, and uh, today's Sunday. I hope you're having a wonderful Sunday there. Um, so it was like a usual one for me. I went to church, I came back, had my lunch, and then I thought of doing this video on Werner's law. So if you're watching my channel for the first time, and this is the first video that you bumped into, then today I'll be discussing on Werner's law, but I would recommend you to go watch Grimm's law video because Werner's law is an extension of Grimm's law. And if you don't understand Grimm's law, then you probably won't understand Warner's Law also. So I would recommend you to go back, watch the video on Grimm's Law and then come back here. Now, those who are familiar with Grimm's Law, are you ready to study Warner's Law? Now, the reason why I've used the space theme for these slides is because uh, I remember when for the first time I learned about Warner's Law, I was totally in air. So uh, th that is the reason, you know, why I took the space theme. Uh, but then uh, by the end of this video, I can assure you that you would have zero doubts on Werner's Law. I can bet you on that. So let's study Werner's Law. Werner's Law, it was formulated by a Danish philologist named Karl Werner. Now let me check if you really studied Grimm's Law. So if you studied Grimm's Law, then answer this question now. There is a consonant sound shift that is mentioned in Grimm's law where the voiceless plosives in Proto-Indo-European languages, they evolve into dash in Germanic languages. You can pause the video, go comment down below your answer and then come back. It's all right even if it's a wrong answer. The correct answer is voiceless fricatives that means uh, the voiceless plosives p t k or to simply remember it as p t k evolves uh, in germanic language as voiceless fricatives f th h f th h f theta h that's how we remembered it right all right that was one consonant sound shift that was mentioned by grimm's law now, what Carl Werner discovered was that um, this set of sound consonant sound shift uh, doesn't happen in every word of Germanic language. Okay, it depends if the voiceless plosives per occur, if they are in a stressed environment, if the stress falls on them, okay, then it will follow Grimm's law and evolve as in Germanic language that is as voiceless fricatives but if there is no stress on them if they are in an unstressed environment if they are relaxing in a chill mood then it follows Werner's law the voiceless plosives they evolve as voiced plosives burdegger this is what werner's law is i hope it is clear to you now okay let's understand it in a better way according to grimm's law you would agree with me the voiceless plosives perturker changes to voiceless fricatives fathaha so per evolves as fur in Germanic language, the Proto-Indo-European T evolves as Th in Germanic language, the Proto-Indo-European K evolves as a H in Germanic language. This is Grimm's law. There is also one sound set that you should remember. According to Grimm's law, the S sound, though it is not mentioned explicitly in Grimm's law, this is something that you should remember because I'll be telling you about a new phenomenon. All right. So S sound. In Proto-Indo-European languages, the S sound remains unchanged even when it evolves in Germanic language. So, S remains as S according to Grimm's law. This much is clear to us, right? Now, let's see how it transforms into Werner's law. The P sound changes to B sound. The T sound changes to 
द साउंड ना इट इज नॉट जस्ट द ड साउंड समटाइम्स इट ऑल्सो चेंजेस एज द साउंड ओके द द इज रिटर्न एज लेट मी अटेम्प्ट यूजिंग द पेन एंड दिस आई नेवर ट्राइड इट बिफोर लेट मी सी हाउ इट वर्क इट्स इट्स समथिंग लाइक दिस सी द ओके so it is either the or the sound is produced all right so the evolves as the or the sound k evolves as g in germanic language that is the first sound set we that we know that we should understand from werner's law so the voiceless plosives they transform into voiced plosives in germanic language all right that is werner's law and the second set of change that i taught you according to grimm's law the sir sound remains as sir itself but when it comes to werner's law the sir sound evolves as z sound or even as r sound r it also evolves as r sound this phenomenon is called as rhoticism okay this is called as rhoticism r h o t a c i s m that phenomenon of rhoticism this is werner's law werner's law states that the voiced sorry the voiceless plosives under unstressed environments they transform or evolve as voiced plosives in germanic language and and there is also phenomenon of rhoticism that occurs where the s sound evolves as z and later also develops as r sound in germanic language okay this is werner's law i hope there are no confusions regarding what werner's law is let's see one by one 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 example of each of them all right first example so what did werner say if the p sound it is not under a stressed environment then it changes to b sound this is what werner said let's see if it is correct in proto indo european latin language there is a word septim okay now can you guess where is the primary stress falling septim it's on s therefore because s is stressed on s remains as s even in proto germanic language when you take the gothic word for septim it is sibin do you see in septim the stress is on s so in gothic language it remains unchanged but if you take the p sound of septim it is hardly heard in fact right it's kind of silenced it is an un, it is an in, in an unstressed uh environment so for that reason p the p sound which should according to grimm's law change to f sound because it is not stressed because it is in an unstressed environment it evolves as b in proto germanic language therefore it is in gothic as sibin the p changes to b this is werner's law okay let's check out next example example number 2 in proto indo european the sanskrit word for father is pita can you check the stress pita p the primary stress fall, falls on p so therefore p evolves as f according to grimm's law but if you take pita you know so t the t sound is actually not stressed that much it's in fact pita ta that's how it is so it is in an unstressed environment for that reason the t sound doesn't evolve as th the theta you know it doesn't evolve as the th sound but evolves as the sound or d sound okay see this is what i was talking earlier the d sound okay either as d sound or as d sound this is how it evolves all right so i hope that is clear to you 
so in old english we call for father as father the the sound and in middle english it evolved as father but we never say father the th is never stressed right this is werner's law i hope it is clear so the second change that werner mentioned was that t in unstressed environment does not follows grimm's law but evolves as d or d sound okay now let's check the third example the third example is also a similar one okay of that evolution of the t sound into d or d sound let's see over here in proto indo european the latin word kentim kentim it changes in proto germanic modern english language as 100 okay it is the word for kentim in modern english is 100 look at the primary stress it's on k kentim k k k right so k changes to h because there is stress on it so it follows grimm's law that is clear to us but kentim tum that t is not that stressed it's not in a very stressed environment it's in fact a secondary stress you know or it is uh, uh, under less stress because it is unstressed therefore it follows the werner's law and changes from t to d in 100 100 right all right now what did werner say what was the third sound set of change that he mentioned he said that when the sound k it is in an unstressed environment it does not follow grimm's law it does not evolves as h sound instead if it is in an unstressed environment it evolves as g sound let's see see the latin word ocular which means eye okay the latin word ocular it's not ocular it's actually ocular ocular okay the old english word for ocular is yag that's something how it is yeah yag yag that's how i guess that's how the pronunciation is so the latin word ocular can you check where is the primary stress falling it is on o right and the k is not that very stressed because the k sound is in an unstressed environment it does not follow grimm's law and it evolves in proto germanic or old english languages g yag yag g g sound is coming all right so this is werner's law now the last sound of set change that werner mentioned was the s sound does not follow s but instead it evolves as z and r for example kiosan kiosan okay the old english words these are old english words okay kiosan which means to choose if you want to select something if you want to choose something the old english word was kiosan kiosan okay the the primary stress is on k right kiosan all right so the san that sa it's it's not exactly the s sound that you, it's it's kiosan okay it's z sound that you might hear the past form of kiosan is kuron it's kuron okay it's r so see the the s sound sounds as z sound and it changes to r in its past form i'm not talking about the stress environment here this is a separate phenomenon that i'm talking about and that s sound changing to r sound is roticism this phenomenon is roticism all right so i want you to remember this also all right i don't know about this you know i'm just a bit confused that uh, in some text it mentions that it is a part of roticism is a part of werner's law in some they say it is not directly related to werner's law also but anyways if you are writing in your exam then please do mention about roticism all right 
so that's all for today's video i hope uh, werner's law was easy to study uh, this is the most easiest way that i could explain it uh, so thank you so much and i hope that you're not in air and uh, now you, all your confusions are over so i'll see you in the next video then bye take care